الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله ما دير السلام بدز أن فيوز مدرين شانل الحمد لله we are back with another program, Imam Ahl Sunnat, in which we are discussing the biography and the seerah of Sayyidi Ala Hazrat Imam Ahmad Raza Khan, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali. So far, Alhamdulillah, we have discussed many aspects of the life of Sayyidi Ala Hazrat Radiallahu Ta'ala and many parts of his blessed seerah. And we've learned many aspects that we can implement in our lifetime as well. And uh, so many things that we have learned in relation to how great of an individual he radiallahu ta'ala and was. Today we've come with another topic insha'Allah ta'ala and we mentioned that topic in a few moments. But first, let's remind ourselves of the virtues and the excellences of sending salawat and salam, peace and blessings, durood e upon the messenger sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. The beloved and final messenger of Allah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. He is reported to have stated that recite salat upon me in abundance Undoubtedly, your recital of salawat upon me, this will be forgiveness for your sins. My dear son, brothers, this narration tells us a means to gain forgiveness for our sins. Let me and you make this intention to abundantly recite salawat and salam, peace and blessings upon the Messenger, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Sallu ala al-habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. My dear son, brothers, alhamdulillah, today the topic that we are bringing to you is a very beautiful topic. And it's a topic in which we find that has a great importance in Islam. It's a very uh, important aspect of Islam, and that is spirituality. Tasawwuf, uh, the concept of the tazkiyah of the nafs. All of this comes into a, inside this uh, particular topic. And we are going to talk about the state of Allah Hazrat and his spirituality his uh, aspect of tasawwuf, his karamat, etc., etc., insha'Allah ta'ala. And also, like usual, we will have our segment about the kalam raza as well, insha'Allah ta'ala. And we'll have another beautiful kalam of Sayyidi Allah Hazrat radiallahu ta'ala and that we will be going over uh, today again, insha'Allah ta'ala. So it's a motherly request that you stay with us from the beginning up until the end of the program, insha'Allah ta'ala, and gain the benefits of this as well. Insha'Allah Azza wa Jal. Once again, Alhamdulillah, we have our Muballig Sayyid Munib Shah Sab with us, Insha'Allah Ta'ala, who will be going over various Madani pools with us uh, in terms of Sayyidi Allah Azza Radiallahu Ta'ala and, and the spirituality as well, Insha'Allah Azza wa Jal. Jee Munib Shah Sab. Jee Taqir Bhai, in the life of Allah Hazur Rahmatullahi Ta'ala, be it the Ba'at, be it the Khilafat, be it even Imam Ahmed Raza Khan, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali's Murids, uh, the Khulafa, Imam Ahmed Raza Khan, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala's first Hajj, their second Hajj, or be it when they are in the presence of the Prophet Ali Salatu Wasalam, or be it their love for the Prophet Ali Salatu Wasalam, or be it love and respect for the descendants of the Holy Prophet Ali Salatu Wasalam, or be it Imam Ahmed Raza Khan's adherence to the love of Sayyiduna Ghosi Azam, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Alayhi, adherence to the Sunnah of the Prophet Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his contentment and abstention from the worldly activities. All these come under the spiritual spirituality of Imam Ahmad Raza Khan, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Alayhi, that they used to stay away from worldly activities. But one thing I like to talk about is what the Bayat and the Khilafat of Imam Ahmad Raza Khan, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Alayhi. This proves how spiritual Imam Ahmad Raza Khan Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali was. 
and in the year 1294 Hijri, approximately were 22 years old, uh, Sayyidina Allah Hazrat Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali, they became a murid, a disciple of Imam Asfiya, Sayyidina Shah Ali Rasul Mahrirvi Radiallahu Ta'ala An. And this incident surrounded uh, the Bayat, the spiritual allegiance and the Khilafat, the spiritual successorship of Allah Hazrat Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali is this that once uh, Hazrat Mawlana Abdul Qadir Bayda Yuni Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali, they came to Braili Sharif, he invited Allah Hazrat Rahmatullahi Ta'ala to go Mareira Sharif with him. And Sayyidina Allah Hazrat Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali accepted this invitation and they both set off. And when they arrived at the station in Mareira Sharif, Allah Hazrat said something. Allah Rahmatullahi Ta'ala said that I, they were not murid of anyone at that time. He said, I am receiving the scent of my murshid. Subhanallah. At the station of Marira Sharif, I am receiving the scent of my murshid. Subhanallah. One aspect of spirituality was such extent. And now when they reached the Khanqai Barakatiya and entered, uh, Sayyidina Shah Ali Rasul Rahmatullahi Ta'ala, they peace up. So Allah has it and said, come in, I have been awaiting your presence for a long time. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. As such a genius, such a uh, spiritual master, Ali Rasul Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali, for them to say that I was waiting for your presence for a long time. Today, if Amir as Sunnah Damal Barakatumul Aliyah says to Taqir, by all Taqir, I've been waiting for you for such a long time. Allah. The kafiyat will be on another level. And we could see Allah Hazrat was feeling so. Sayyidina Asha Ali Rasul Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali immediately, immediately made Allah Hazrat Rahmatullahi Ta'ala a murid and blessed him with Khilafat and Ijazat in all the Sufi Salasil. Subhanallah. Not Subhanallah. just one or two, all of them. Thus, Allah Hazrat Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Peer Murshid was Hazrat Sayyiduna Shah Ali Rasul Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali. And what's interesting about this Tawqir Bay is that Hazrat Sayyiduna Abu Hussain Nuri Barakati, who was also uh, the Peer Murshid of Mawlana Mustafa Zakhan Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali, they were present in the spiritual gathering and a great awliya Allah as well and no introduction uh, needed for Allah Hazrat Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali and Allah Hazrat, because Allah Hazrat knew him. And for the benefit of others who were present there and make them aware of the exalted caliber and the status of Imam Ahmad Raza Khan Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali, he asked a question to Sayyidina Ali Rasul Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali that Yas Huzur, the ritual here, what's commonly done here at Mirera Sharif is that if any person comes here and after becoming a murid desires to gain Khilafat or Ijazat it's not today how you say that you want to become a murid, uh, attain Khilafat, yeah, done. Or after 20 years or after 15 years of being a murid of man, you automatically become a Khalifa. This is common days. But at that time, what it was, that when a person desires to become, uh, gain Khilafat and Ijazat in Salasil, then we ask him to perform Mujahida. I, you struggle in the path of Allah, you become a better Muslim, etc. And we also give him dried bread, to eat as part of his spiritual training. After this, if we find him worthy, even after all of this, you might still be rejected. Allah. And if we find him worthy enough, then we grant him Khilafat and Ijazat, but we only grant him Khilafat and Ijazat in one or two Salasil, or maybe three. But you have blessed this young man with Khilafat and Ijazat of all of the Salasil, not just one or two. Subhanallah. And even commanded him to look at and verify all the kitabs which you have written. Why is this? The Peer Sahib Shaykh Sayyiduna Ali Rasul Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali, they answer in the following words, O oh people, you do not know Ahmad Raza. Others who come here need to be prepared before coming or before gaining Ijazat and Khilafat but Ahmad Raza Khan Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali has come prepared from Almighty Allah. All he needed was a link and this is why I made him a murid. All he needed was a link, this is why. And this part, mashallah, when I read this, you know, it says Iman Taza Ho Jata. When I read this part as well, that I always teared, this is the Shaykh Sahib saying, the Peer Sahib, that I always teared through the fear of Almighty Allah, that if on the day of Qiyamah, if on the day of judgment, he questioned me concerning what I had brought for him from this world, that I would have no answer. But today, that fear no longer exists. Why? Because if on the day of judgment, Allah Almighty asked, O oh Ali Rasul, what have you brought for me? That I will immediately present Imam Ahmad Raza Khan to the Creator. That this individual I have brought into your court. So this was the level of the spirituality Imam Ahmad Raza Khan Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali, he had, 
and this was admired not just by his own uh, family members but even by uh, his peer sahab and all the scholars around the world at that time as well definitely mashallah such a beautiful uh, event from the life of sayyidi ala azat radiyallahu ta'ala an about when he first went to maharara sharif he gave bay'a at the hands of sayyidi ali rasul rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi and also at the time of giving bay'a he received all of the khilafa and all of the ijazat as well and this is a very important uh, concept a very important event uh, like mentioned that uh, sayyid abul husain nuri rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi they questioned about how it is possible that shah ali rasul rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi on the first arrival was giving out all of the khilafat as this was not the norm of say say shah ali rasul rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi they would make the individual go through great uh, struggles in the way of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but when the uh, sayyidi ali hazrat rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi arrived in the court of shah ali rasul rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi they found his heart to be clean his heart ready to be spiritually ready uh, for the teachings and the uh, have a lifting of uh, the concept and uh, the huge burden of khilafa as well and this was such uh, the spiritual exercise of sayyidi ali azat radiyallahu ta'ala an that he was able to carry this uh, from a very young age of only approximately 22 years and he was uh, so beautifully uh, spiritually lifted that he rahmatullahi ta'ala ali took this further upon himself the concept of piri muridi the concept of the murid and the sheikh this has holds a very important aspect in islam and alhamdulillah azawajal we know this from the time of the the prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam how the sahaba would give bay'a at the hands of the prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam then the tabi'in gave bay'a at the hands of the sahaba and this has been continuing up until now to our time and alhamdulillah we find the sayyidi ala hazrat radiyallahu ta'ala an also to enhance his spirituality he also gave bay'a at the hands of shah ali rasul rahmatullahi ta'ala ali although sayyidi ala hazrat radiyallahu ta'ala an had already had that uh, spiritual uplifting but sayyidi ala hazrat radiyallahu ta'ala still needed that connection that unbroken chain of spirituality with sayyidina rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam and throughout the life of the uh, sayyidina ala hazrat radiyallahu ta'ala an you find his connection his spirituality to his uh, peer murshid say uh, and the uh, uh, family of the peer murshid shah ali rasul as well as uh, sayyid abul husain ahmad nurimiya rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi as well as uh, sayyidun sheikh abdul qadir jilani radiyallahu ta'ala an who's the leader of the qadri uh, silsila as well as mola ali murtaza karamallahu ta'ala wajhul kareem and that of the prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam all of this shows the spiritual level of sayyidi ali hazrat radiyallahu ta'ala an how he would focus himself Uh, spiritually and so many times uh, we in the, our program we have a segment about the kalam of ala hazrat radiyallahu ta'ala if we are to focus upon these kalams of ala hazrat you will find the spiritual status of sayyidi ala hazrat radiyallahu ta'ala an as well that how he would get lost in the uh, love and devotion of the prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam and how he was, he was spiritually lifted and how this would take him forward as well inshallah ta'ala Itagir by Allah Hazrat Rahmatullah Taala Ali, they talk in regarding the peace, peace, or murshid, etc. They had great love and immense um, love for their Sheikh. Then why is this? Uh, as you mentioned, the Sahaba when they took bait upon the Prophet Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you the Sahaba respected the Prophet Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the most respected uh, creation amongst the creation of the Allah Tabarak Wa Taala, and we respect. the prophet ali sallallahu salam and we respect sahaba ikram radhiyallahu ta'ala because they were the khulafa and etc but we even to such an extent uh, tokir bhai we even respect the khadimin of the prophet ali sallallahu salam so those that were in their service or those that they, the prophet ali sallallahu salam sent uh, towards certain individuals with a message similarly ali hazrat following this what happened was Uh, he displayed Allah Azza wa Jalla Taala. He displayed all, love to all those who had contact with their peer sub and respected them. Subhan and whenever Allah Azza wa Jalla Taala went to Marira Sharif to gain blessings from his peer or murshid, he would remove his shoes at the station Allahu Akbar. and walk bare feet in Marira Sharif. Subhan Allah. 
whenever any person or any representative from Bareli Rashid arrived in Bareli Sharif to deliver a letter or a parcel to Allah Hazrat Rahmatullahi Taala Ali, Allah Hazrat Rahmatullahi Taala would treat that person with great respect and dignity. Subhanallah. And he addressed this person with words of respect such as most respected representative, and they would, and he would not allow that individual to leave without something to eat. Today, uh, some representative comes to our house house at the door, we take it and we can say, okay, you can go. We won't invite him. Or if he does come inside, then we start thinking that, or when he's going to leave? Or, when, uh, or do we start thinking, do we give him food? Or we just open off of water? We don't, or don't offer tea, or we offer tea, we won't get him to eat. But our Hazrat was not such an individual. The love that they had for the Shaykh Sahib, they respected anyone who was in contact with, uh, or in relation with them as well. And Allah Hazrat Rahmatullahi Ta'ala, this is the at attribute of Allah which I love the most. Because of the, this, he attained through spirituality, and no other person generally would do this. Uh, for example, if a guest comes to our house, it's very unlikely for me to go in the kitchen and bring the food. Normally, the kitchen, what would happen? The kid bought, food is bought by the door of the room, then you go take it from there and bring it in. But Allah Hazrat was not such. Allah Hazrat would personally go into the house where the kitchen is and bring out food for that person, and to such an extent. He even used to carry the dish or plate of food on his head. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. <laughs> we, carry, we sometimes carry it in our uh, hands and all that. But uh, Allah Hazrat was such an individual who used to carry the... Uh, this is not his Shaykh that's present. He's in, in reality he's just an ordinary individual. But he's from the city of his Shaykh. From the city from his Shaykh and he's linked to his Shaykh. SubhanAllah. This was the immense spirituality of Allah Hazrat. That he didn't just carry it, he placed it upon the head and then he took it in the, in the court of that representative. And now just from this point we can think that this is the love of Allah Hazrat for a representative of his Shaykh. Subhanallah. Then what can be the state of the love for his Shaykh? Subhanallah. And Subhanallah. then what can be the state for the love of the Sahaba Kiram? Definitely. Then what can be in the, uh, state. the state of the love of the Prophet Ali Salatu Salam? So this was a not Allah Hazrat's level of spirituality was not a normal level because he was known as a Qutbul Waqt SubhanAllah. and he was a Qutb of his time and our other Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali's spirituality is very rare that you see individuals talk in particular about the spirituality of Al-Azir because normally what they're talking about is the, his uh, khidmat, what uh, they have learned, the books they have wrote this is commonly talk, spoken about but there's very less individuals that know or talk about the spiritual side of Allah Hazrat Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali. SubhanAllah, very beautifully uh, Shah Sahib has mentioned a few points. Uh, and the gist of this point is love. Whenever you love someone or something, automatically the honor uh, of that thing and everything connected to that thing is built inside your heart. When we claim our love for the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam, Along with this love of the Messenger Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam, Alhamdulillah, we love everything that is connected to the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. The Sahaba Ikram, the companions of the Messenger Sallallahu Ta'ala we love them. The Ahlul Bayt of Rasulullah Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam, we love them. The city in which the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam was born in, Makkatul Mukarramah, we love that city. The place that the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam migrated towards, Madinatul Munawwara, we love that city. Alhamdulillah, those actions of the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam that he would do on a day-to-day -day basis, Alhamdulillah, we love these actions. We love the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. And this is an aspect of love that automatically is built inside our heart. Similarly, Ala Hazrat Radiallahu Ta'ala An, he had love and he had honor for none other than his Shaykh Shah Ali Rasul Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali. And when anything was connected to Shah Ali Rasul Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali, he would love that thing. Lenten, just a beautiful narration about a representative of Shaykh, the Shaykh, Shah Ali Rasul Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali, how Sayyidi Allah Hazrat Radiallahu Ta'ala An would show utmost respect, utmost honor and give it extreme dignity uh, and reverence towards this uh, blessed, uh, this personality. Why? Because he was a representative of his Shaykh. Today, me and you, we need to think as well, that when it comes to, for I just mentioned one example, when it comes to the Sadat, 
the family of the Messenger Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. They are linked to the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. Inside their body, inside their veins, runs the blood of the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. What is our attitude towards these blessed personalities? This is part of spirituality as well. Sometimes we, are, we don't understand what spirituality is. When we talk about tasawwuf, when we talk about uh, spirituality, we just think about karamat, miracles, things that uh, we cannot under comprehend. But spirituality is far greater than this. Everything that is attached to your beloved, you love that, you adhere it, you show honor and respect towards it, that is part of the spirituality. Today, what do, how do we live our life and how do we show respect towards the sadat kiram Sayyidi Allah Hazrat radiallahu ta'ala, many narrations can be mentioned about his connection with the Sadat Ikram. And I will just mention uh, one, and it's a very famous one as well. That one Sayyidi Allah Hazrat radiallahu ta'ala was invited to come and visit a certain place. And the, cost, the custom at that particular time was uh, that obviously there was no cars around. Uh, and what used to happen was that when uh, uh, an individual, especially a great scholar like the personality of Allah Azad radiallahu ta'ala, when he was invited to a certain place, they will send a carriage uh, in order to uh, bring Allah Azad radiallahu ta'ala in. And obviously at that time, the carriages, they were picked up by uh, people. People would pick those carriages up and the scholar would sit in that carriage and come towards that area they were invited towards. Once such a carriage came, four individuals, uh, were there as well to pick up the carriage and Sayyidi Allah Hazrat radiallahu ta'ala was invited to a certain place. Sayyidi Allah Hazrat radiallahu ta'ala and then he uh, sat in that carriage and the people that were there, they picked the, uh, the carriage up and Sayyidi Allah Hazrat radiallahu ta'ala and they started taking. After just a few steps, Sayyidi Allah Hazrat radiallahu ta'ala, he stopped them. He told them to put him down. Sayyidi Allah Hazrat got out of the carriage. When he got out of the carriage, he asked a question and he says, out of you, who is from the family of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? First, no one really replied. They were hesitant into replying. And then eventually one of them, he said that I am uh, from the family of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Upon this, the kaifiyat, the feelings of Allah Hazrat radiallahu ta'ala and they completely changed. Sayyidi Allah Hazrat radiallahu ta'ala had great remorse and he asked that individual for forgiveness, and he even placed his blessed Imam at the feet of that Sayyid Sahib. This is the level of spirituality of Sayyidi Allah Azza Radiallahu Taala that I am referring to. Not just that, Sayyidi Allah Azza Radiallahu Taala asked for forgiveness over and over again. That individual, he said, he, he said to Allah, "I have forgiven this. There's nothing in this. I have been sent with this duty. This is my duty. This is what I'm, I've been sent for to pick you up." Sayyidi Allah says, "No, you may have been sent for this." But I will not ride on the shoulders of a Sayyid, someone from the family of the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. Rather, Sayyidi Allah Hazrat Radiallahu Ta'ala, the great scholar of his time, he got that Sayyid Sahib, made him sit inside that carriage. And then along with the other three individuals, Sayyidi Allah Hazrat Radiallahu Ta'ala and carried that Sayyid Sahib to that place that they were going. This is the spirituality, this is the love and the devotion that Allah Hazrat radiallahu ta'ala had with those uh, blessed entities that are linked with Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa What can me and you do today? How can we show our love and devotion towards Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa What is the state of our heart? Today, what are we finding in our heart? Do we find it inclined towards Allah? Do we find our heart inclined the sunnah of the messenger sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam or are we very far away from it? This is something that we need to ask ourselves. Today we are talking about the spirituality of Allah Hazrat. Let's try and uplift our spirituality as well insha'Allah ta'ala. Let's try and clean our souls, purify our souls so that our souls are spiritually uplifted and then we can gain the closeness towards Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam and the closeness towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well insha'Allah. MashaAllah Tawqeer, as you mentioned uh, regarding the respect of Allah Hazrat towards the Sa'adat, there was this individual who was, uh, you can say, a khadim of Allah Hazrat and he was a Sayyid. And when Allah found out that he was a descendant of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, then they ordered all the people around him, even his family members, that do not take work from him. But in, in, uh, on the contrary, that he said that, uh, give him more. 
مطلب منی ایکسیٹرا گیو ایم مور منی دس واز آل از لو فار دا سادات اینڈ ایکسیٹرا اینڈ ان ریگارڈز ٹو سادات ال مینشن دس ان دا فالوئنگ واقعہ اف اعلی حضرت رحمۃ اللہ تعالی علیہ that whenever they used to distribute some things for example uh, if, if a non sayyid and a sayyid were present the say non sayyid will get uh, one and the sayyid will get two this was the, this was the habit of ala hazur rahmatullahi taala alay that the individual who was the descendant of the prophet ali sattu salam used to get double uh, than compared to a normal individual and generally you know when this is mentioned by scholars um mostly what awam know what they've been told is that this was only in relation to sayyids this is not correct not in only in relation to sayyids this was also in relation those people that used to get twice as more was for those individuals who had a beard subhanallah and this uh, this is also proves the spirituality of ala hazrat there is this individual they were on their way to meet ala hazrat and it was quite a long journey and on the way they seen a shop um and they were selling something and this individual Uh, he became hungry by looking at it he goes i want to eat it so the individual was taken he goes we'll eat it on the way back and when they reached the khanqa of ala hazur rahmatullahi taala alay um when they seen that ala hazur was present and everything was um, the met and everything done then uh, that same thing that this individual saw on the way was brought in that gathering as well and it was been distributed and as you as you have mentioned before the norm at that time was because of ala hazur saadat and those individuals who have the blessed beard of the the sunnah of the prophet ali sattu salam they were given two not one and this individual he didn't have a beard and he was given one when ala azir look he goes give the individual two give the individual two so the khadim asked the sayyidi um, he doesn't have a beard though he goes do we give him two his heart wants two so ala hazur rahmatullahi taala alay knew what was in the heart of this individual and he knew that before he came he wanted this also subhanallah so this was the level of spirituality ala hazrat rahmatullahi taala ali possessed and we can learn from many other waqiat of ala hazrat rahmatullahi taala ali's uh, karamat uh, that inshallah will mention as well in, later on after the segment as well that will happen of the kalams any aspect you look even in the the nartiya kalam hadaik e bakshi this is full of spirituality definitely and in reality no one knows what ala hazrat means by the kalam in reality the shara of hadaik e bakhshish the shuruhat which i mentioned it, this is what we think ala hazrat could have meant and it's still beautiful definitely <laughs> this is how our mind and yours and scholars thinking because we're not on the level of ala hazrat this is our thinking that this is what ala hazrat could have meant and we still enjoy the kalam subhanallah when in reality what ala hazrat meant and in what state ala hazrat wrote it, in what spiritual state ala hazrat wrote these kalams this is on a another level so talking about the spirit of ala hazrat rahmatullahi taala alay you know it is mentioned regarding ala hazrat rahmatullahi taala alay but scholars have mentioned this i've heard this myself as well they mentioned that one can talk for hours on just one aspect of of the life of ala hazrat rahmatullahi taala balki now what's happening is that people are doing phd on ala hazrat rahmatullahi taala alay they are studying ala hazrat their life and this uh, spiritualism and how they were such a m- grand mujaddid alongside they were a wali allah kutub of his time and how they performed these actions and what how they have time and everyone is amazed the aqals the uh, the minds are amazed the intellects amazed at how this individual had this much time this was indeed that because this individual was blessed by allah tabara wa taala and because of his spirituality as well subhanallah very beautiful points uh, that uh, munif shah sahab has mentioned uh, and it's definitely true whenever we look at the life of sayyidi ala hazrat radiyallahu ta'ala an when we talk about and we think about uh, the blessed personality of ala hazrat radiyallahu ta'ala all of these things definitely do come to mind uh, how great of an individual he was and like uh, you just hinted towards his time for the segment of the kalam e raza inshallah ta'ala where we talk about various different kalams poetry of sayyidi ala hazrat radiyallahu ta'ala and today we got a very beautiful kalam and this kalam it's been given the title qasida e nur okay the qasida uh, about nur and it's a very beautiful very famous kalam most viewers of madrin channel may have heard it uh, today inshallah ta'ala once again uh, we've come and we're going to explain a few verses obviously we can't explain a lot of it 
uh, but just a few selected verses of this uh, kalam inshallah ta'ala we will recite we'll try and explain uh, the meaning of it as well inshallah ta'ala and gain the benefits of this inshallah which kalam is referred to kasida as kasida nur the kalam is subha taiba mein hui batta hai bara nur ka sadaka lene nur ka aaya hai tara nur ka such a beautiful kalam of sayyidi ala hazrat radiyallahu ta'ala an and inshallah ta'ala we will try and uh, talk about this inshallah ta'ala so the first verse first couplet of this kalam subha taiba mein hui batta hai bara nur ka sadaka lene nur ka aaya hai tara nur ka is talking about taiba referring to madina munawwara subha talking about the morning batta meaning that what gets distributed bara nur ka bara meaning the khairat uh, the uh, bounties of uh, of nur this is the beautiful uh, this is referring to what the prophet sallallahu ta'ala wasam is distributing uh, in madina to munawwara sadqa lene nur ka to gain from uh, this uh, nur aya hai tara nur ka even the stars uh, come to gain a light and a glimpse from uh, the prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam so we we'll, inshallah ta'ala we will uh, listen to this verse as well inshallah subha taba me huwi batta hai bara nur ka sadqa lene nur ka aaya hai tara nur ka subhanallah uh, the next verse uh, is a very beautiful verse and it talks about the intercession of the prophet sallallahu ta'ala alaihi wasallam tere hi ma the raha ae jaan sahra noor ka bakht jaaga noor ka chamka sitara noor ka this is talking about the prophet sallallahu ta'ala as being the intercessor how on the day of judgment all of us are going to be wanting to gain from the intercession of the prophet sallallahu ta'ala alaihi wasallam and the sayyidi ala hazrat radiyallahu ta'ala is telling us that the crown of shafaat of intercession this is placed on the blessed head and the forehead of sayyidi rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam and on that day everyone is going to be trying to gain happiness through the medium of the intercession of uh, sayyidina rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam uh, shafaat and when we gain that uh, shafaat then everyone will start enlightening like stars enlighten on the night sky as well tere hi ma the raha ae jaan sahara noor ka tere hi ma the raha ae jaan sahara noor ka bakht jaaga noor ka chamka sitara noor ka another a uh, beautiful verse uh, in relation to a uh, beautiful couplet uh, in this kalam is taj wale dekh kar tera imam noor ka sar jhukate hain ilahi bol wala noor ka today we have uh, kings and ministers that they uh, of this world that have a very high status uh, in the world sense they have crowns on their heads but when they think and they look towards the blessed imam of sayyiduna rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam even they are to lower their heads in the court of the prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam taaj wale dekh kar tera imam noor ka sar jhukate hain ilahi bol wala noor ka taaj wale dekh kar tera imam noor ka taaj wale dekh kar tera imam noor ka sar jhukate hai ilahi bol wala noor ka such a beautiful kalam of sayyidi ali hazrat radhiyallahu ta'ala an every single couplet it has its own mahak it has its own uh, beautiful fragrance that we can uh, understand that we can smell and just like sayyid amir al-sunnat says 
that whenever you listen to the kalam of Allah Hazrat, all you need to do is just carry on swaying in love for uh, Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. And you know that these couplets that are written by Sayyidi Allah Hazrat radiallahu ta'ala and they are deeply indulged in the love of Allah and His Messenger sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Inshallah, we will have another segment of the kalam raza later on in our program inshallah ta'ala. And we will talk about a few more verses of Sayyidi Allah Hazrat kalam. كسيدة نور إن شاء الله عز وجل صلوا على الحبيب صلى الله تعالى على محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم. ما دير سامع بس الحمد لله. Before our segment كلام رزا we were going over and talking about the biography of Allah Hazrat رضي الله تعالى and the topic of today is our talking about the spirituality of سيد الله حضرت رضي الله تعالى. Today many of us are need of that spiritual guide. That can give us a good spiritual upbringing. And Sayyidi Allah Hazrat radiallahu ta'ala, and when you look throughout his works, uh, like we mentioned, even throughout the Hadaiq e Bakshish, many aspects of uh, the works of Sayyidi Allah Hazrat radiallahu ta'ala, and they will always continuously give us that spiritual uh, upbringing so that we can find uh, the purity of our souls as well, insha'Allah ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, in our day and age, we have this Madani environment of Dawud Islami that is taking the uh, works of Sayyidi Allah Hazrat radiallahu ta'ala and the mission and the legacy of Sayyidi Allah Hazrat radiallahu ta'ala and, and taking it to all four corners of the world. And how, Alhamdulillah, Amir Ahli Sunnah Dawud Barakat Mul Aliya, Mawlana Ilyas Attar Qadri, Hafidahullah ta'ala, how he has uh, tirelessly uh, made efforts to spread the mission of Sayyidi Allah Hazrat radiallahu ta'ala and to carry on the spiritual mission of Sayyidi Allah Hazrat radiallahu ta'ala and, and get everyone to uh, indulge themselves in the remembrance of Allah and His Messenger sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. One great aspect of the life of Sayyidi Allah Hazrat radiallahu ta'ala and we've already touched upon it uh, shortly uh, a few of his karamat. And inshallah, I would request uh, Munib Shah Sahib, inshallah, to mention a few more of his karamat so that we can understand the spiritual status of Sayyidi Allah Hazrat radiallahu ta'ala. This the following uh, karamat of Allah Hazrat rahmatullah ta'ala I want to compare this to uh, the current day and age that those that uh, say karamats don't exist, they don't happen, etc. And um, regarding this, an individual says that I was present at the house of Allah Hazrat Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali and this was Thursday in Bareilly Sharif and some individual came to meet them and that meeting time wasn't the usual time Allah Hazrat uh, used to meet people but he was very adamant that I want to meet them so the Khadim at that, at that time that was there he went to the private chamber, private room of Allah Hazrat Rahmatullahi Ta'ala to inform them but they were not present in their room they weren't present and not just in their room, they weren't even present in the entire house. It wasn't the habit of Allah to go out and about and all that. So we started thinking that where could have they gone? And while these individuals they were waiting for Allah, they were looking for Allah Hazrat, and um, they were amazed that where Allah Hazrat could they have gone? Then what happened is that Allah Hazrat Rahmatullahi Taala came out from his own room. He came out of his own room initially. They went to the room, checked, Allah was not there. Allah came out of his own room, so they were confused. And the Khadim asked that we couldn't find you now before, but just now you came out to your own room. What is the secret behind this? And then Allah Hazrat Rahmatullahi Ta'ala said, Alhamdulillah, that every Thursday at this time, from my very own room in Braili Sharif, I visit Madina to Munawwara. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. I visit Madina to Munawwara. I from Bareilly Sharif, they visit Madina to Munawwara. Now, Tokir Bai, if for example now we are in England, if you were to go to another country, let's say you were to go to France or Germany, for example, or even Pakistan, and or you are here, for example, and you want your email to work in a different country, it will work. Or sometimes when you log into an email, sometimes they ask because you have protection on your account, it will ask for an OTP and a notification and you will send them a notification from a different country will be sent to where? Where's your phone? Here. Here. A notification will be sent from that country to here. This is the current day technology. 
But whereas the technology, I wouldn't say technology, but the system of vilayat is completely something else. It is even quicker than what we call WhatsApp today. It's even quicker than a second to reach to a different place. And there's another, there are many narrations, many incidents regarding vilayat and wali Allah's that when they used to walk around a corner, someone was following a pious individual. And he from and when he followed that individual, uh, he reached a certain area where that individual went to a house. When he inquired where, this, where is his house, and uh, when he told him that his house is in a certain, certain uh, location, then he said that this house that I was just following by foot is, what, is about miles and miles and miles away from my own house. So he just went to a complete different direction. And regards to Allah, rahmatullahi ta'ala ali, that if a email, etc., the current day technology, which just invented recently, if these can be easily from there to here, within a second or so, a message can come. Even, for example, if I was to send yourself a message now through WhatsApp, for example, it comes straight away. This is one point I'd like to mention. If your connection is good, it'll be sent straight away. Yeah. al Azza's connection with Allah wa was Subhanallah. amazing. Subhanallah. And with the Prophet Salam, this is why instantly al Azza was present in Madinah al Munawwara. So this was the spiritual spirituality of al Azza Alayhi that every Thursday, they used to visit the blessed Rawda of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. MashaAllah, very uh, important aspect uh, and the belief of the Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah in relation to the karamat, uh, the saintly miracles uh, of uh, the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, very important to understand. Remember, we might think, the how is this possible? We might think, the how can an individual in a few seconds from Bareilly go to Medina every single Thursday afternoon. How is this even possible? Remember, a karama, a saintly miracle is those things, that thing that does not come into the intellect. This is why it is known as a miracle. And we know from the narrations that this is one thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He opens up for His beloved people, that He closes the, the world for them. In a few steps, they get from one place to another place and then back to the other place as well. And this is, in a few moments, this is possible. And this is the uh, power that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the authority that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, blessed to His beloved individuals. And this is haqq, it's proven. Uh, many narrations can be mentioned in relation to this as well. And uh, it's very important that we realize the aspect of uh, the karamat of the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You talk, um, regarding the karamat of Allah Hazrat rahmatullahi ta'ala, as I mentioned before as well, Allah Hazrat knew what was in the hearts of his people, of anyone. How? Maulana Zafuruddin Bihari rahmatullahi ta'ala, they received, he mentioned, he says this himself, that I received a telegram from home saying that your my daughter is not feeling well, so come home. So this in the Mawla Zafruddin Bihari sahab rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi, they thought I'll go to Allah Hazrat, ask for permission and then go home. So then I came in the court of Allah Hazrat rahmatullahi ta'ala, he says, that just before I was about to ask for permission, Allah Hazrat gave a book and he said that make a copy of this book and give it back to me. So then uh, this was the habit of in the companions that whenever a buzurg or whoever they follow, when they told him to do something, there was no I'm um, my shine. There was nothing ifs or buts, they will do it. So they didn't say anything at that time. And remember at that time there was no photocopy machine. There was no printers that you could easily copy and uh, all that. So they wrote, they, they copied the book entire because they used to, they wanted to give that book back. So they made a copy of that book word by word by hand. So it took them all night. So morning came and they said in the morning I'll go now to ask Allah Hazrat Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali. When they went in the court of Allah Hazrat Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali, and they were about to tell him that the book's done and uh, can I go home, my daughter's not feeling well, I received the telegram. Allah said, uh, Zafruddin, before, the, before even uh, Mawlana Zafruddin sahab rahmatullahi ta'ala, they even spoke. They were just about to speak and before they spoke, Allah said, Zafruddin, don't worry, your daughter has recovered. Subhanallah, subhanallah. So they didn't tell them, Allah knew what was in their heart. And just after some time had passed, a telegram came again from the home of Zafruddin Bihari rahmatullahi ta'ala Ali that uh, don't worry, your daughter has recovered, you don't need to come home. Subhanallah. So this is another karamat of Allah Hazrat Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali. And Allah Hazrat Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali Tawkir Bhai, of course, is not a normal individual. His karamat 
as you mentioned, a karamat is something which uh, does not uh, normally be done by human beings. It cannot be fathomed by our brain. Now, how can this happen? To be honest, um, Taqdeer Bhai, um, the amount of karamat which I have read recently regarding Allah Hazrat, even as we have uh, this silsila, we would need salah sil. We need more than one silsila to cover, I would say, not even more than half. Because it's, there are many karamat, some of which are not even written. This is written as well. There are, there are many karamat of Allah Hazrat Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali that happened but they weren't noted down, they weren't written. Similarly, is the same regarding their books. Definitely. Today they wrote over a thousand books which have come to us, but they have written much more than that. And because of certain incidents, some of their books or the ink, etc. were ruined because of that incident. And this is why all the books we couldn't get attained today, attain the blessing from them today. And uh, the spirituality of Allah Hazrat, what can be said as well? And if you want to know the spirituality of Allah Hazrat Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali Tawkir Bhai, Look at the look at Amir Ahl Sunnah Dama Barakat Mulahaliya. They have there is one saying which is a famous saying of Amir Ahl Sunnah Dama Barakat Mulahaliya that my eyes are closed for Allah Hazrat. And why is this? Because they knew and they have given they have uh, gotten the faizan of uh, Allah Hazrat Rahmatullahi Taala Ali, and they follow Allah Hazrat step by step in guidance and everything else. Definitely, at the end of the day, Allah Hazrat Radhiyallahu Taala is. Uh, the spiritual grandfather of Amir Ali Sunnah Dhamma Barakat Aliyah. So Sayyidi Ali Azad radiyallahu ta'ala and Khalifa Qutb Madina Mullah Ziauddin Madani radiyallahu ta'ala and and then Amir Ali Sunnah is murid of them. So definitely uh, Amir Ali Sunnah Dhamma Barakat Aliyah he looks up greatly towards uh, his spiritual grandfather Maulana Shah Imam Ahmad Raza Khan rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi and Amir Ali Sunnah Dhamma Barakat Aliyah has given us the mindset as well that we are to follow Sayyidi Al Hazrat radiallahu ta'ala and many aspects can be mentioned uh, like we've already talked about but talking about spirituality of Al Hazrat radiallahu ta'ala and we have to uh, mention uh, the waqiya uh, during the second hajj of Sayyidi Al Hazrat radiallahu ta'ala and where Sayyidi Al Hazrat radiallahu ta'ala beheld the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala Probably one of the greatest uh, aspects of the life of Sayyidi Allah Hazrat radiallahu ta'ala and uh, physically in the wakeful state, beholding the Messenger sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam, being blessed with the ziyara of the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam. Uh, it's a great uh, spiritual uplifting event itself as well, and it shows uh, the spiritual status of Sayyidi Allah Hazrat radiallahu ta'ala. And if you can just uh, briefly explain this. Uh, to the views of Madani channel as well, inshallah. I believe many of them may have heard it previously as well, uh, but inshallah ta'ala, if we listen to it again, it will be a great spiritually uplifting event for us as well, inshallah. When Allah Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali went to perform Hajj for the second time, he's, he Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali, one habit of theirs was to continue reciting Salat and Salam upon the Beloved Sallallahu Ta'ala Ali Wasallam. So they were reciting Salat and Salam in front of the tomb till late night. And they had a wish to behold the beloved Rasul Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. But the first night, he was not uh, predestined to be blessed with the vision of the Prophet Ali Sallallahu Wasallam. And on this occasion, the spirituality of Allah was Rahmatullahi Ta'ala was such that, you know, the wish is a wish, isn't it? That when we wish something, we want it to come true. So on this occasion, he rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi, he wrote a famous poem, a famous na'atiya kalam, whose opening couplet, he expressed the hope and attachment to the merciful Prophet Ali salatu wasalam, which goes as that, wo suwe la lazar pirte hai, tere din ay bahar pirte hai. To which the explanation is, that O oh spring, get delighted. Look, the sovereign of Medina sallallahu ta'ala alayhi is coming towards the flower bed. In, and in the closing couplet, he Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali, he expresses humility and humbleness in these words. That koi kyun pooche teri baat raza, tuj se shayda hazar pirte hai. In reality, Allah Azza wrote the word um, kutte hazar pirte hai, i.e. the word dog. But however, uh, the word shayda means admirer. He has written there and we have changed it to shayda out of respect. And when they recited these couplets, he Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali, they sat there waiting to behold the Prophet Ali Salatu Wasalam and at last, Subhanallah, his fortune smiled upon him and he was blessed with the 
vision and beholding of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, not in his dream, Allah in Allah. such a state that his physical eyes were open. He was awake and he was blessed with the vision of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in wakefulness. So only we can do the wa'ada, may Allah wa ta'ala have mercy upon them and forgive us without accountability for their sake. Ameen, ameen. My dear son and brothers, definitely this is a great spiritual uplifting event from the life of Sayyidi Allah Hazrat radiallahu ta'ala and we inshallah ta'ala also need to understand this as well and gain uh, blessings from this as well inshallah azza wa jal and my dear sister and brothers one thing from this as well that we learn is the humility the humbleness in the court of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the reason why these veils were lifted and this is another aspect of the spirituality of Sayyidi Al Hazrat radiallahu ta'ala. And he was an extremely humble individual. And he had extreme humility in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. And then when he showed this extreme humbleness, this extreme humility, the veils were lifted. And in the wakeful state, Sayyidi Al Hazrat radiallahu ta'ala and was blessed with beholding Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Uh, in a wakeful state, we make dua that at the time of our death as well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to behold the Messenger sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam as well. Ameen, bijahin nabi jilameen sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Insha'Allah ta'ala to bring our program to an end today, we will come back uh, talking about the beautiful kalam, our segment of kalam e raza insha'Allah ta'ala, where we're discussing the kalam, subha ta'ba meh huwi bat tahe bara nurika, insha'Allah ta'ala. We will come to this segment, Kalam Raza. The next couplet of this beautiful kalam that we will go over is such a beautiful couplet. Uh, uh, and inshallah ta'ala, uh, when we understand this, and it's not too difficult, but inshallah we have a brief explanation on this as well, inshallah ta'ala. Understand it, then reading it, listening to it, it has its own beauty, uh, beauty attached to it as well. May gada tu badasha, barde piyala nuraka, Noor din do na tera de dal sadaka nuraka. How beautifully Sayyidi Allah Hazrat radiallahu ta'ala is saying that we are just merely slaves of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. And Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, he is the king, he is the badshah. And we are here in the court of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam with a little bowl. And we just wish that Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, he fills that bowl. Uh, with his blessed nur and with his uh, blessed distribution that he has been distributing towards the entire universe and we are able to take that into our lifetime as well insha'Allah ta'ala May gada tu badasha barde piyala nurka nur din du na tera de dal sadaka nurka May gada tu badasha barde piyala nurka nur din du na tera de dal sadaka nurka MashaAllah, very beautiful couplet Alhamdulillah Another another beautiful couplet Jo gada dekho liye jata hai tora nurka Noor ki sarkar hai, kya isme tora noor ka? Another beautiful aspect of how we mentioned previously in this segment, that Sayyidi Allah Azat radiallahu ta'ala, he takes the same word and he uses it in different meanings. One, the, the word tora, this is as a bagful as well. It's used in the meaning of a bagful and it's used in the meaning of less as well. So Sayyidi Allah Azat radiallahu ta'ala says that, Jo gada dekho liye jata hai tora noor ka. That whichever individual that you see coming into the court of the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, you will find him taking away bagfuls and bagfuls. Noor ki sarkar hai, kya isme tora noor ka? This is the blessed personality who has been blessed with a lot. Do you see that there is a less in quantity with the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa No. And when the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala would give and he would distribute, he does not distribute in less quantity. He gives bags and bags of full. Jo gada dekho liye jata hai tora nuraka, 
नूर की सरकार है क्या इसमें तोरा नूर का जो गदा देखो लिए जाता है तोड़ा नूर का नूर की सरकार है क्या इसमें थोड़ा नूर का टुडे वी डिस्कस्ड इन आवर प्रोग्राम अबाउट द लव विद द सादात ए किराम द फैमिली ऑफ द प्रोफेट सल्लल्लाहु तआला अलैहि वसल्लम द वेरी फेमस a verse from this kalam is also teri nasl e paak mein hai bachcha bachcha noor ka tu hai ayn e noor tera sab garana noor ka how beautifully sayyidi ali hazrat radhiyallahu ta'ala shows his love his expression of devotion even towards the family of rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam teri nasl e paak mein hai bachcha bachcha noor ka ya ya rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam from your blessed offspring every single child is illuminous every single child is beautiful and illuminating tu hai ayn e noor tera sab garana noor ka you are the essence of light the essence of noor and your entire family your entire generation it is extremely enlightening and illuminous how beautifully say the allah azza radiyallahu ta'ala and he expresses his uh, love and devotion to the family of the prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam teri nasl e paak mein and very beautifully we got uh, an individual from the nasl of rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala wasallam reciting this as well inshallah तेरी नस्ल पाक में है बचा बचा नूर काक तेरी नस्ल पाक में है बचा बचा नूर का तू है ऐन नूर तेरा सब गराना नूर का नेक्स्ट बस is uh, a verse in the praise of the third khalifa of islam sayyidina uthman ghani radiyallahu ta'ala an we know that sayyidina uthman ghani radiyallahu ta'ala he is that individual that was blessed with the nikah of two daughters of the messenger sallallahu ta'ala wasallam one after another and one of the titles given to him is zun nurain the possessor of two lights so sayyidi ali hazrat radiyallahu ta'ala he takes this event of being blessed with two of the daughters of the prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam and the title of zun nurain and he states noor ki sarkar se paya do shala noor ka ho mubarak tumko zun nurain jora noor ka noor ki sarkar se paya do shala noor ka ka noor ki sarkar se paya do shala noor ka ho mubarak tum ko zun noor ain joda noor ka and there some others like we mentioned many verses of sayyidi allah azza refer to the glorious quran as well in the glorious quran there are huruf muqattaat those uh, ayahs of the quran which it is mentioned that we do not really know the meaning of them but the ulama they have mentioned a few meanings that they could be and sayyidi allah azza radiyallahu ta'ala and he gives us an example of one of these meanings that the huruf muqattaat can be as well and sayyidi ali hazrat radiyallahu ta'ala he states kaf gesu ha dahan ya abru aankhe ain sad kaf gesu meaning the blessed zulfa mubarak the blessed hair of the prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam ha dahan ha meaning the blessed tongue of rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam ya abru ya referring to the blessed eyebrows of the prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam aankhe ain sad the blessed eyes the ain and the sad kaf ha ya ain sad unka hai chehra noor ka this huruf muqattaat kaf ha ya ain sad this is referring to the blessed face of rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam kaf gesu ha dhan ya abru aankhe ain sad kaf ha ya ain sad unka hai chehra noor ka and finally sayyidi ali hazrat radiyallahu ta'ala in the final verse that he writes in this kalam and we we talked about spirituality in this particular uh, program of ours the spirituality of sayyidi ali hazrat again this is referring to the connection 
of the Khandan of Maharara Sharif, that Sayyidi Allah Hazrat Radhi Allah Ta'ala and has Shah Abul Hussein Ahmad Nuri Miya Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali, the love and the devotion that Sayyidi Allah Hazrat Radhi Allah Ta'ala has towards them. Ay Raza, ye Ahmad Nuri ka faiz nur hai. Ho gayi meri ghazal barkar qasida nur ka. Ay Raza, ye Ahmad Nuri ka faiz nur hai. Zaye Ahmade Nuri Kafeze Nurhe Hogai Meri Ozel Perdiker Kasida Nurika. My dear son, brothers, very beautifully today we've discussed the spiritual aspect of Sayyidi Allah Zetradi Allahu Ta'ala and how he was such a spiritual individual and how we can take that into our life as well. And we've gone over a very beautiful kalam of Sayyidi Allah Zat. Subha Taiba mein hui batta hai bara nauruka. We also touched upon the aspect and the event of Sayyidi Allah Zat radiyallahu ta'ala and beholding the Messenger sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Many aspects can still be talked upon, but time uh, of our program has come to an end. We make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He allows us to benefit from the spirituality of Sayyidi Allah Hazrat radiyallahu ta'ala and, and for the sake of the pure soul of Allah Hazrat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also purifies our souls as well. And for the sake of the connection of Allah Hazrat with Allah and His Messenger sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, we also are blessed with this uh, pure connection as well. Ameen, bijahin nabijil ameen, sallu ala al-habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, keep watching Madani channel. Imam Muhammad Rida, Imam Ahli Sunnah, Imam Ahmad Rida, Imam Muhammad Rida, Imam Ahli Sunnah, Imam Ahmad Rida.